Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Brush Hour. We haven't done this show in a little while. I've been absent uh, for some uh, certain things I had to get done in my life, um, but we've, of course, had some replays, and I'm glad for that. Remember, all of these episodes are replayed um, on YouTube immediately after they're broadcast. You can go watch them back anytime you like. They're all archived there. They're also archived on Behance, behance.net. And speaking of Behance, if you want to interact with me today, I'm over here on Behance, be.net slash live, where we can chit chat with one another. You can ask me questions and we can talk about brushes um, all the live long day. Uh, I'm gonna check out over here on Behance. I'm gonna switch over to my live view and uh, see who is joining us today for the old brush hour show. Um, we're gonna do a mini series today. And uh, this is part one of this mini series. We're gonna kick it off. And we're gonna talk about, for this mini series, lesser known brush sets. Um, what I mean by that is some of the smaller little brush sets that were created, for those of you who have your Adobe Creative Cloud subscriptions for Photoshop and Fresco and so on, where you can have access to this massive library of brushes. Um, and there are some of these brushes uh, or brush sets that rather people are not that familiar with and uh, they don't know that um, they are really powerful. They're small, but they pack a big punch. And so what I wanted to do today was review um, some of those for you. I'm just going to head over here to the chat. My uh, browser decided to drop the connection there, and then I couldn't get back to it. So hopefully I can see who is here with me today watching the show, and we can hang out and talk to one another. There we go. All right, I see lots of folks joining us. Um, now, please, in the chat, if you could, tell us where you're from. It's always fun to know where folks are watching from. What's up, Michelle? Nice to see you, and Sig, and Sam, and General Kenobi. What, back from the dead? Holy cow. I see uh, Frank is here, and Norsh. Nice to see you as well. Um, who else is joining us? Bruce, what's up, Bruce? Nice to see you as well. Eldis, um, and some other good folks, Clarissa. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining for this little hour of brush chit-chat. Why don't we just jump right in here? I'm going to pop on over to uh, Photoshop. What you see here are some drawings by the great Ben Sean. Um, now, there were a lot of illustrators who were inspired by Ben Sean's work, and there were artists uh, who inspired Ben Sean. Um, and uh, one of the things I was always drawn to, pardon the pun, with Ben's work is um, the quality of his line. All right, Kadoki. So um, when you're looking at this work, you'll notice that there is a nice broken line quality going on here. Now, I don't know what Mr. Sean used for his drawing instrument of choice, his weapon of choice when he was drawing. I'm going to assume, though, that it was a nib, um, a pen with a nib that was uh, both um, fairly flexible and um, allowed him to sort of uh, cut into the paper, or rather really apply quite a bit of pressure and allow the ink to kind of spread and, and pool for just a half a second. And then he could drag it along and then by moving his hand in an irregular fashion, create these lovely lines that we see here. Um, and when I say nib, folks, what I'm talking about is, allow me to just, uh, before I jump into these running inker brushes, grab a plain old brush that I use for the old draw along show here. I'm talking about, you have the, the barrel or body of the pen, and then you have these interchangeable nibs that you can use. A calligraphic artist know what I'm talking about. Calligraphers and letterers know that you can buy nibs in various 
width. Okay, so a nib like this, for example, would allow you this much space, a nice big wide mark that you could make. Um, and if you want to play with something maybe similar to that, um, go ahead and open up a trusty mega pack. And in there, you'll find in the ink box category, ink box, the parallel KTW pen right there. And this will allow you to do these nice chunky marks like this, but you can also use the side or angle it however you want and do this kind of business right here. All right. That is the parallel KTW pen in the ink box category. Um, and that is inside the mega pack. Now on this show, I always like to point out to people that in order to acquire these brushes, you would head over, if you're in Photoshop, to the brushes panel. And um, this is a little hard to see, but right here in the top right corner of your brushes panel is a tiny little drop down menu. And inside that menu, you see this option to get more brushes. Now I, for one, think that this option to get more brushes should be a giant neon sign that just randomly flashes up on your screen in Photoshop once an hour um, so you're aware it's there. Because I cannot tell you how many people have a Photoshop subscription or a Fresco subscri uh, subscription and they don't realize that they have access to over 1,900 custom brushes designed by yours truly. Thank you very much. Um, and you just tap on that and it's gonna launch a window in your browser and here you'll be prompted to sign in okay and if you sign in with your Adobe Creative Cloud credentials your username and password that's all you need you will be taken to a page that has tons and tons and tons of brush sets for you to download and they're wonderful so this little set here the runny inker set that we're going to talk about today as part of this mini series is one of those brush sets and it is um yeah, I'll just go ahead and say it. It's not as well known as it needs to be. So let's take a look at it. Here it is, Kyle's Runny Inkers. All right, I'm gonna hide these lovely works by our friend Ben Sean. And mention that he was one of the inspirations for this uh, Runny Inker set. But um, if you're really into Ben Sean's stuff, there actually was a Ben Sean inspired brush that was added to all of these Photoshop and Fresco brushes that are available for you all about uh, six, eight months ago. And it was in one of the updates. You know, um, those of you who pay attention to the brush stuff know that once every season or so, I create a whole new set of brushes and release them to the world. Um, and you all get to play with them and experiment and have fun with them in your illustration work. And so if I'm not mistaken, um, it was the spring 2021, let me, or uh, winter 2021 brush set. Let me just double check on that. Um, let's see. No, it was not that one. Keeping track of my own kajillion brushes can be a little difficult, I have to admit. Uh, so let me see here. I want to see if I can find these for you since I know that um, some of you might want to play with that. Let's try spring 2020. It might have been that one. No. And I'll tell you, I went to summer 2020 maybe. I went to um, the Wake Forest University campus where there was uh, an original Ben Sean drawing on display. And I thought, you know, I really want to make a brush that can help people to draw like that. Um, and so I went ahead and did it. Spring 2019, there it is. Spring 2019. Here is that Ben Sean brush. Check it out. Look at that. You can just go chunky, chunk, 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 chunk tiny little lines like this. So that'll get you where you need to go if you really want to emulate that Ben Sean look, okay? All right, but back to the runny inkers. So 
There are, I believe, 12 brushes in this set. It is a small set, and the sets that we're going to be talking about here in this mini-series are, for the most part, rather small, usually fewer than 30 brushes, I would say. Um, and so for the runny anchors, I think these are probably, this is going to be almost the smallest set of the bunch. <clears throat> the smallest of them all um, will be the copier brushes. And we'll get to those in another episode. Um, all right, so let's see if anybody has any questions while we are here. And I'm just going to uh, jump out and double check our connection here, make sure everything's good. Since I'm seeing that some people are saying that the stream is frozen. Frank says, I love the Mega Pack, but it's so huge. It's easy to get lost sometimes. Frank, it's totally true. I, I agree with you. And the issue there is that there are over 400 brushes. However, I did try to, of course, um, put them into categories that would make it easy for you to find what you need. Okay. So with these uh, runny inkers, they have names that are a little weird, but they're called blot bot. Okay, the blot bot brushes. Um, now, why is that? Well, <laughs> the simple truth is, when I was designing these brushes, uh, I was calling them the blot bot brushes. And at the very last minute, when I released this brush set into the world, I changed the name to Runny Inkers, and that stuck. Um, so that explains what's up with the naming there, in case you were wondering. Now the idea with these brushes is that every line you draw will be different from the last and will have a nice variation in the width of the stroke all the way through. Using pressure will allow you to draw lines that are thicker, okay, or thinner, depending on how much pressure you're using with your stylus. So you can see you get quite a range from thin all the way up to thick, okay? But these are for line drawing and therefore they're not going to get super wide, okay? But they'll be wide enough for you if you need to add some emphasis here or there. Um, and there are, again, 12 of them. Each of them have a, their own unique qualities, okay? And I very much want to uh, point out that every artist is different, every project is different, and I'm going to show you some ways today to take the brushes that you like in the set and modify them a little further for your, you know, your own project needs or just the way you like to draw. And then you can save variations of these brushes for yourself to use in the future so you don't have to reset them every time. And I'm going to start with spacing. Okay, now if I just run through these really quickly here. Here's blot bot one, blot bot two, and three. Here's number four. You can see they're quite similar, right? Number five, that one's a little bit different. It's Got some interesting variation going on. Six is a lot more uniform, still has some bumps and, and jumps and things. Now here, interesting, when you get to number seven, what you're dealing with here is, and I'm gonna use more pressure, look at that, is mostly dots, okay, that have more spacing. And that brings up the first thing I wanna mention as I just run through these really quickly here. There's number eight, number nine, here is the BlotBot bonus brush, the tenth in this in the set. Uh, this one I use a lot, by the way, for drawing in fresco. In case you're curious, uh, BlotBot Perfecto. Okay, that one's really quite nice as well. And the twelfth is the old Da Do Run Run from the song. Okay. Uh, met him on a Friday, and his name was Blot. Just kidding. All righty. <clears throat> Let's talk about customization. Now, returning here to the old BlotBot bonus brush. Take a look at that for just a moment here. And I'm just going to uh, reconnect to the chat. Something's going on with my connection today with the chat. I'm not sure what's going on, but it just keeps booting me out. I'm not sure why. Oh, Bruce, you're so welcome. Say thanks for all the brushes. So happy to provide those for you, my friend. Um, of course, naturally. Uh, yes, okay. 
Um, we're going to talk about spacing, so I'm opening up the brush settings panel. Now in the brush settings panel, all right, we have the option for spacing right here down at the bottom. This is very important, okay, because this is going to be primarily the way that you will affect the behavior of each and every one of these brushes. All righty, check it out. At the moment, it's set to 55. And spacing is basically this. For every time that I am telling Photoshop, hey, I want to draw a line, and we're using a stamp for a brush, which is how these basic Photoshop brushes work, I'm taking a shape and I'm dragging it along the screen. And if the spacing is set very low, it's simply telling Photoshop that you're going to be placing that stamp very close to the most recently placed stamp, and so on and so on and so on. So close together, in fact, usually that it looks like a solid line. But if you wish, you can actually increase the spacing between those stamps. So out of the box, okay, this brush, and that again is the blot, Bot Bonus brush and the Ready Inker set, is going to make lines that look like this, okay? That's based on the spacing, as well as some other things. Let's take that spacing up to a value of 90 and see what happens to our line. Well, there you go. We're now seeing more space, okay, being drawn in between every instance of the stamp that we're using for this brush. What's wonderful about this is how quickly and easily you can affect and change the quality of the line. If you're liking this sort of runny inker, dotty line look for your drawing, but you want your spacing to be just a little tighter or a little greater, here's how you do it. You come to brush tip shape and you play with the spacing. So for example, I might really enjoy a spacing of 70. And that might just be where I wanna hang my hat for the day or for a certain project. Maybe I'm doing some spot illustrations for a client and they say, we need a duck and uh, we need a cat. And I say, all right, um, duck. There we go. Duck is ready to go. We need a cat. Okay, so I look at the style that I'm employing here for the duck and I say, okay, cat, and I gotta do something similar here. So we'll go up and over, down, across, and turn. And you see how consistent that line work is, right? And for this curly Q thing, if I want to use something like that there, I can do that. And there's my spot illustration for the cat. Um, okay, now for another project, I might be using more of a dotty approach. Okay, so I want more spacing like that. Or maybe I'm doing it for a detail of something, all right? So for example, we decrease the spacing back to where we were, value of 70 or whatever that happened to be. Maybe it's like we're drawing a vase, okay? And then I say, okay, now for the vase, I wanna have some patterns on there. So I'm gonna increase the spacing and just do this, cross there, um, use more pressure here and go like that. And then maybe I want to decrease the spacing for a more solid line, okay? And come across here like that. And then increase the spacing again for some kind of a shadowy sort of thing down here or a suggestion of a ground plane or whatever. All of that with one brush and just increasing the spacing. You can see what you can do to play with it. Um, you can check here for some questions. The brush settings panel is always so daunting, says Randall. But Randall, I have good news for you. That is what this show is about. And if you go back um, to some of the archived episodes, you'll find a lot of episodes where I talk very explicitly and specifically about how to use the brush settings to your advantage, what each setting means, and so on. 
Also, if you go to my Illustration Masterclass, which is another um, Adobe Behance show that I do once a week on Fridays, you'll find episodes where I talk and explain more about how the brush settings panel works. So you are in good shape and you can find what you need there, I should hope. Um, Stu says, I like to use increased spacing when making custom brushes for texture like tree bark. Excellent example. Sure, that's a good, a good case where you could use that. Um, okay, so there we go. Spacing is the key. Now with these brushes, you're going to want to do that. Um, let's look at some other things that affect and impact how this brush is going to behave. We're going to open the panel again. So we have under Shape Dynamics, Size Jitter. This is, this is crucial. One of the things that makes these brushes work nicely is this variation you're getting in the width of the stroke all the way throughout the length of whatever stroke you draw. And the size jitter is part of that, all right? If I increase that size jitter, let's say to like a value of 70, you can look down here at the brush stroke preview and you can see how that's going to impact the stroke that you draw. See right here? There's the preview. Now watch. It will change as I modify the slider for size jitter. The lower I bring it, the less obvious it is that something's changing. Now let's bring it up to 100 and draw a line. You'll see every now and then I get these teeny tiny little gaps or these little lines because I'm giving it a full range of um, options for every instance of the stamp as it's being drawn, okay? to go from being essentially a value of one pixel all the way up to whatever the maximum is. And in this case, it's 20 pixels. So between one and 20 pixels in the diameter of that stamp, Photoshop is randomly choosing any one of those values and using it for the brush as you draw. That's pretty neat. Um, and so that is what is controlling things here for size jitter, okay? Um, we have also uh, the options to control the orientation of that stamp, okay? Whether or not you can flip it horizontally or vertically randomly as well. And to do that is gonna give me another quality to the line, okay? And I think that would be a really good way to add um, some variation to the stroke that you're drawing, all right? Very nice. So we talked about spacing, right? Right here where it says brush tip shape spacing. Another thing you might notice is this little diagram right here. What this represents, okay, is um, your brush's uh, angle and roundness, okay? And whatever the shape is of the stamp that you've created for your brush, you can actually uh, transform it by squishing it either from the top and bottom or from the left and right sides. Okay, and so if I were to take this and just compress it like this, look at what happens to the line in my brush stroke preview window right here. Here is a full stamp at its regular dimensions. And now I'm compressing it from top and bottom, okay? Making it skinnier. See what happens to the line I draw, right? Now you might wonder why when I draw from right to left, okay, and up and down, is the line still the same width more or less? You would expect perhaps that if the stamp were this compressed, and while I, let me just spread that out for you so you can see that. If the stamp is compressed like this, right, so it's wider than it is tall, why is it not so that when I draw down, I get a wider uh, stroke? Well, here's why. This is very important. In Shape Dynamics, we have the angle control set to direction. So what it means is, no matter what direction I draw in, the stamp I'm using will rotate accordingly and follow that direction 
Okay, so that the look I get for the line is consistent in any direction I choose to draw. If I were to turn that off, right here, so now I have no angle control, what you might expect to happen does happen, which is if I draw from right to left, all right, the line I make is going to be looking like this, but if I draw up and down, see that? That's what I get. There are going to be times when you want this to happen. You want this to be the case. Most likely not with the blotty, uh, the blot bots, um, which are the runny inkers, the runny inker brushes. Um, but there are other cases where you're going to want that to happen. So I just want to point out why that's happening and how you can control it. Okay. So I can also control the angle of the brush stamp. See? Now this could be pretty interesting for certain effects <clears throat> and certain things you want to do. Right? So good to know that you have the option to modify it. So I'll put this back roughly where it was. And if I ever want to reset my brush, all I have to do is tap on it one time and everything is back to normal. Okay. Speaking of things being back to normal and resetting brushes. I mentioned a few minutes ago that there are going to be times when you want to take these brushes, modify them, and then use them that way going forward. If you wish to do this, so for example, this blot bot bonus brush, I will go and I will increase the spacing to 76, let's say. Okay. There we go. And I like this variation of the brush. I'll go to Shape Dynamics, flip the X and flip the Y jitter, okay? And I'm going to increase the size jitter to a value of 50%, like so. All right. And this is a brush that I want to work with. In order to save this for myself, I come over to Brushes. And right here, I'm not going to tap on the brush itself. That will reset it. I'm going to tap just below it. You see this little plus sign here. Just tap on that. And here I have the option to create a new brush. So I can call this Blot uh, Bot Perfecto Variant or, or whatever I like. And I make sure that the things I want to capture are going to be retained. The, the brush size, for example, I might want that to be set so that every time I select that brush, it always reverts back to the same size. Include tool settings. This doesn't matter for this particular brush because I don't have any specific settings for opacity or for flow or for brush mode. Okay. But if I did, I would make sure that that was checked. By default, it is checked and most people prefer that. I will not check include color because I don't want there to be a specific color affiliated with this brush. But you can do that if you wish. Say OK. And voila. Here we have our blot bot. And just underneath it is the variant that I've created. And now I can go to it anytime and I can draw with it and it's going to be fine. So it's as simple as that to create a version of a brush that you like and want to go use for other projects moving forward. All right, let's see. Just check in the chat here to see if we have any questions. Christy, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're curious about this stuff. Yes, yeah, there's a lot you can do here. Bliss, thank you for joining us. Nice to see you. Used to calling you Golden Rose. Then you're here from South Africa. Well, that's cool. We were just on a trip with some good friends of ours from South Africa. Sam says, I need to make a point to experiment with new brushes each week. I think that's a really good habit. Hi, Tunk. <laughs> uh, he, he, you're calling me the Lord of the Brushes. I will gladly accept that compliment. Thank you so much. Okay, now, 
We've talked a little bit about changing the, the appearance of the brush strokes that you make with these running inkers. And after all, this mini series is about these lesser known but powerful brushes. Um, so why am I a fan of, of these brushes? Well, I mean, of course I, I created them because I like the way these things look. So I'm a fan of line art that looks less perfect. Um, I, I like unpredictability. Uh, of course, there are instances where I definitely need things to look at a line work. So I made these uh, for that reason, and I want other people to be aware that they exist so they can enjoy drawing with them. I've used these quite often for spot illustrations for magazines and for online. Uh, small that has to have a they wanted me to draw some cowboy boots. Uh, I could use a regular brush, boots with a spur, right? And uh, maybe some variant that we just created. I could do things like this. I could make a little loop there, come through. And you can a lot more fun for this purpose. Right, and you can imagine that in a little spot illustration for a magazine. Maybe this is a great time to show off for you one of the ways you can use these brushes in the episode of this mini series where I wanna talk about the manga brushes because those do have um, some half tones in them. And I've always thought that one of the great things about the runny inker brushes is that they play so wonderfully with the half tones. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like. I'll go ahead and make a layer underneath my line art. And I'm gonna open this brushes panel and open up the manga brushes. And down here, I've got a few nice half tones, okay? So I think I'll try the grid. I'll see how that looks. That one's pretty nice. There's the dots, that one's pretty nice. Um, I like that, let's see the grid is pretty nice too. I might use the dots. Scale down to about 26%. Like that, so I get a little. And here, I can just select this area here and just paint in that little pattern like that. And then select this other area and do that. Now, one of the fun things too is you can have your your halftone pattern be offset. You know, this might work. Actually, I think classic two is really what. Yeah, that's really where I want to go. So I would make a shape that wasn't quite perfect like this and go ahead and fill it in and I can lock my layer transparency and you guys have all seen this before where I come over here to layer my layers panel and where it says lock tap on this very first icon that's going to lock my layer transparency okay and what this means is I can then use a lighter gray and hit option delete whoops hang on a minute lock layer transparency hit option delete and that's going to fill in um, every single pixel with the foreground color which is this lighter gray right here make it even lighter option delete okay and so here i can make it so that i'm, I'm um 
going to select away part of this here, get rid of it. Offsetting that pattern. So it's not quite right. It looks like when they in the printing process, it kind of got off by hair, right? Or maybe it's just a little messy. And that adds a nice touch. So I think the halftone brushes of any sort, but from the manga, manga brushes are, are nice uh, to combine with these runny inkers. In fact, you could do solid shapes and then you can use the runny inkers to draw details. What I mean by that is, check it out. Let us use our lasso tool. Now remember, this, there's a trick you can do with the lasso tool, either, the, either polygonal lasso or your regular lasso tool, where you can swap between the two using the option key on your keyboard. If you're on a PC, that would be the alt key. So I have my regular lasso tool here, but I wanna make a triangle, so I'm gonna hold down the option key and it allows me to tap like this to so temporarily use the polygonal lasso. And I'm just gonna fill this with a halftone pattern, okay? Drawing that with that halftone brush. And then let's take one of those runny inkers, all right? So maybe, how about this Blotbot 7? And I can draw a little elf. Okay. Now for the body, I could do another halftone pattern. So jump down to these manga brushes again and use these small circles. And I'm gonna add little arm shapes here. Hold on a minute, I think I'm just gonna do this. There we go. And I'll draw some shoes in a moment, but um, different pattern here. Go back my brush history. It's going to find the brushes most recently used. Oops. There's that blot bot. To draw over my halftone pattern like this. And that's a nice little uh, spot illustration as well. So you can use these together very convincingly for lots of effects. Um, Jack's here. What's up, Jack? How you doing? Carla, hi. You don't see the spring 2019 brushes? Hmm. Um, the spring 2019 brushes will be on the download page for all of your brushes, which is if you go to get more brushes. Um, you sign in with your Adobe credentials on this page. And after signing in, scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll find 
all of the um, the brush sets. It's possible that spring uh, 2019 um, might have been renamed maybe summer 2019. Maybe it wasn't ready for spring and it was renamed to summer. Um, that's a possibility. So I would say look in that area, like winter 2019, spring 2019, summer 2019, somewhere in that span, you should find the brush set that contains the Ben Sean brush. Um, that's my advice. And I, I'm not actually signed in at the moment. Um, but yeah, that's where you'll find what you need there. So please go ahead and mention in the chat if you still don't see them. Okay. Hi, Oyvind. Um, oh, you're having a bit of a lag in the broadcast. I'm sorry to hear that. And you're in Norway. Well, I hope that that's, that's not happening everywhere. Let me know, folks, if you're having some issues with the streaming. Another question I have is from Eldis. Um, Eldis says, is there a way to randomize the pattern or the position of the brayer brushes pattern? Um, not really, but that's why I added a special set of brayer brushes for you called, uh, I'll show you the, hold on a second. I think they're called brayer control. So if you are using the brayer brushes and those are in the mega pack ink box, you'll see brayer boss. And then under that, you'll see these brushes called brayer control. And the idea with the brayer control brushes was that you could sort of direct um, the pattern like this. So I can go this way, that way. And so if I need to do things that help try and, and convey that there's a directional movement, a specific directional movement, I will use these brushes to do that. But um, this is not to say that we won't down the road have the ability to do that for our brushes. And it's, it's definitely something that's been on the table um, up for discussion, which is controlling the direction of a texture. So these things are being discussed. Hi, Anika. Nice to see you as well. Excellent. Everything's good, says Michelle. Refreshed the feed and it's all good. Okay, cool. Yeah, Eldis, I'm sorry, but yeah, with the specifically with that brush, um, if you wanted to make it consistent in a different direction, you could do that. Um, you would have to resave the texture file that's associated with it. If you were to look at, for example, this brush, uh, the Brayer Boss variant brush, okay? Come over to the texture and you'll find it right here. And you just tap on this little downward facing arrow and say new pattern. And you see how it says Kyle Brayer 2K17. Um, Go ahead and save that pattern. It'll show up in your in your textures here. And what you would do is make a new document for yourself and uh, fill it with that pattern. Okay. So there we go. Um, and let me just double check something here. Uh, edit. Fill. I'm going to hover over this for just a moment. It'll tell me how big it is. 1300 by 2482. Uh, so actually you need to make your, make your document that size. So 1300 by 2482. Make my new document the same size as the pattern. That's important. And fill it. Okay. And then simply rotate your canvas or image. So I'm going to rotate it. 90, 90 degrees clockwise, for example. I could save that as a new pattern and then ass, um, assign that to the brush. And it'll make it so that my brayer pattern then is, is really moving right to left as opposed to up and down. That's kind of the only option you have right now. But like I said, in the future, that might change. All right, so 
Uh, are we frozen again? Oh dear. Hmm. Looks like there's some issues with the connection today. Hopefully it's all good. I'm just going to double check. Yeah, YouTube keeps telling me I have bad connection. All right, I hope, I hope it's working. So we have a few minutes left. I still want to talk a little bit about which, what else you can do with these runny inkers, okay? Let's just bounce back up there. And I'm going to be using this um, blot, bot, blot Bot Perfecto brush here to draw. Okay, there we go. So what we wanna do here is we wanna talk about other things you can do with the brush if you're gonna to start to apply some other settings. One of them is scattering. And you'll notice that in this uh, brush, we have scattering set with a control to pen pressure, okay? And what that means is when I draw with more pressure, okay, it's going to shift the direction up or down of the positioning of that stamp. A good example of where that's happening is right here, where you can see there's actually a bump where the placement of this particular instance of the stamp is just popping up over uh, the line, the direction of the line I was drawing sometimes it pop under, right? And you can control that with pressure. This is a really amazing thing that you have this ability of control over how the line works. Um, and so you might want to play with expanding how much that happens. And if you turn off uh, pen pressure as a control, okay, look what you can do you can start to break the line apart in really interesting ways like this. Now the reason I bring this up is there are effects and patterns and textures you may wish to create using a single brush that generate, uh, where the brush will generate this kind of random behavior. And this is a way to do it, is to use scatter. So I can increase that slightly a bit more. And I can also increase the instances of the stamp. Okay, so if I were to go up to say a value of four, and then remember our, our spacing here, and increase the spacing a little bit, I can start to get weird stuff like this. Okay, now how is it possible for an area like this to occur? You'll notice these three separate skinny lines. Well, look at the, sh the shape of my brush stamp right now, okay? as I hover it over the screen. It is a very thin um, ellipse, right? It's been compressed top to bottom. And what, mean, what this means is that as I draw, okay, it's going to change its shape from that sometimes to a something closer to a circle, right? But since there are three instances, uh, instances of that stamp, I was able to, just by sheer luck and coincidence and the random behaviors that we're assigning here, get something that looks like that. So let's go ahead and take our scattering and increase it to a value of five. And if you'll notice I still haven't played with the, um, the x-axis or the y-axis. I'm not, I'm not allowing uh, the stamp to jitter along the y-axis, which means it would go left or right as well. But I could do that, and that's gonna give me a completely different brush stroke as well, okay? And again, if I increase the spacing, and with shape dynamics, increase the size jitter, you can see how you can start playing with this kind of stuff 
and then start giving yourself the options to do this. Someone earlier in the chat had mentioned using various brushes like this for textures. Well, by me just drawing all these lines in the same direction with this newly created brush with all of its scatter and size jitter, I start to be able to create areas that look like this. Now there's no way I could generate a single brush that would create one big fat patch like this. Um, but by using this brush and drawing lines in a very natural way, I can create these very cool textural areas of an illustration. And don't forget that size is still being controlled by pen pressure to a degree. So a very light amount of pressure will generate lines like this, right? And heavier pressure will generate lines like this. So now I have quite a bit of range within which to work to create these marks, okay? Um, Annika says, what would be the brush stamp size of a brush with the maximum size 4,000 pixels? Um, what would be the brush stamp size of a brush? The maximum size of a brush in Photoshop? Are you saying the reason any brush pixelates is that you have exceeded the size of the original stamp that was used to create the brush? Um, a lot of the brushes I've made in the last four years, so from 2017 or 18 roughly to now, I use larger brush stamps that are needed for the brush I'm actually generating because I'm anticipating people might want to size it up by 200 or even 300 or 400%, and I don't want there to be pixelization. Um, so that's one thing I've been doing to, to help with that. Um, but yeah, if you're using a brush at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, pixels, you're guaranteed to get some pixelization because of the fact that um, this is raster art and that means we're using, we're working with fixed number of pixels to begin with um, and it's not vector art. So any kind of enlargement beyond a certain point is going to have to create a certain amount of pixelization. That's something to be aware of. Okay, but I wanted to then, uh, yeah, just conclude by saying that even though the brush set is small, it's got 12 brushes, um, by doing what I've shown you in this uh, brush hour episode, playing with certain settings, uh, you will be able to create variants of these brushes that can do pretty much anything you need um, when working with this kind of style of line drawing. Um, and there's a personality that really shines through with these brushes that I think you can take advantage of with your drawing and um, and really have fun playing with your style, okay? My hope with a lot of the brushes is that people will just naturally start to experiment more because the brushes force them to make marks that they normally wouldn't make with their work, right? That is the goal here. All right. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. This is part one of this series. Part two will focus on the impressionism brushes. We're gonna have a lot of fun with those and that will air in two weeks. Um, don't forget uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays is my draw along show at 5.30 p.m. Eastern and Friday is my master class at 4 p.m. And I hope to see you all there. Um, thank you very much for hanging out with me for the show, and I'll see you all soon. Meanwhile, please take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Remember to be kind, and I'm going to say ciao for now. <laughs>